Jamal's had no money for weeks, and it's no fault of his own. People need to stop with the judginess. We can't see young people going hungry. They just try to treat me, yeah? <gasps> like I'm so drunk. They're just a person that's had a really, really bad start in life, and you're there to help them succeed. <laughs> oh, can I have a cuddle? Yeah, is that OK? This is your story. The system today is so broken. People need to open their mind and actually realise what's going on in the world rather than sitting in their own clothes bubble in their own house with their own little happy family. It's not like that for everyone. It's really not. any young person, leaving home and starting to live independently is a huge milestone. But what if you didn't have a home to start with? What if your childhood had been disrupted, spent in children's homes and foster placements? Well, that's the reality every year for more than 10,000 young people leaving care, expected to become adults overnight. Expected at 18 to take responsibility for their food, health and, of course, their money. Universal credit is now the main form of financial support for care leavers. But last year, a report by MPs found this group of young people are being let down by the system with often devastating consequences. I wanted to know more, so I set out to hear their voices. I think it's also sad that, you know, all these young people are just figures. That's, that's what they are, they're just a number in a book. They've, you know, they, they've no idea who they are as people, what, you know, what actual support they need. In Manchester, Kelly Robinson is commissioned by the local authority to help care leavers. She and her team take on tenancy agreements on their behalf and act as mentors to them until they're ready to rent a property without help. Hi, Gail. Hi, Callum. You OK? Yeah. So we'll probably be there in about 20 minutes, all right? That's easy. Bye. We find Callum at his friend's house playing computer games. I would have this pad, but I wanna... He's 21 now. From the age of seven, he was regularly beaten, before being taken in by his grandmother and then ending up in care. He agrees to talk to me and tell me more about his path to adulthood. Went from Mananas to an emergency care room, from the emergency care home to a foster placement, from there to a hostel. I went from that hostel to uh, another emergency care home. Almost two thirds of children in care are there because of abuse or neglect. I can tell it's had a big impact on Callum's mental health. In fact, he's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and constantly having to rake up his past makes him angry. The amount of times that I'd actually I had to explain myself to different support workers time and time and time again. It's just gone, right, I'm this person, and then two weeks later, I'm getting a new, I'm getting a new worker going, right, I'm this person, I'm your worker. Two weeks, two, three weeks later, I'm this person, I'm your worker. And it's just, it got to the point where I snapped. When Callum's last placements in care broke down, it sent him on a downward spiral. He was taking drugs and sleeping on the street before he found help with Kelly. I was homeless for a while. Um, I ended up in a, another support and accommodation unit. I lost that due to old friends getting in contact. Um, ended up on drugs, um, ended up on spice. Um, ended up homeless. Again, my whole body was constantly swollen. I'd have to get in the hot, I'd have to get a hot shower at night time at the night provision just to warm me up. People need to stop with the judginess because prejudice is, is, is stupid. It's, it's, it's unrealistic and it's, very, it's for close-minded people. People need to open their mind and actually realise what's going on in the world rather than sitting in their own clothes bubble in their own house with their own little happy family. It's not like that for everyone. It's really not.
it's them type of homeless young people that we're really, really trying to reach out to. It's those extra special cases that, you know, obviously fall into the homelessness or get on drugs such as spice or hard drugs sometimes that it takes a lot more work to, to get at, you know, to get them back on track. And sometimes they just, they just fall off. And do you think that's inevitable or do you think there's more the system could be doing to make a safety net for those young people? An hard, that's an hard question because obviously you can't... Not everybody wants to be helped at the same time. So to, I just think there could, they could be more out there for, for when they turn 18 because not everybody is at the same, at the same stage of life at 18. Callum invites me to visit his flat later in the week. Hiya. Do you want to come and open the gate? Oh, are you OK? Yeah, not bad, Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Hey, he um... wants to show me how well he's doing with the right support. Oh, how are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Oh. But when we do meet up, he's had some bad news. No, what happened? Job yeah. centre, I've cut my money down because I've, um, I didn't go to my work capability assessment while I was in Bury. Do you know, because I've moved up here. To cut Callum has been getting a high rate of universal credit payment because of his mental health problems, but he missed an appointment at the job centre, so he's been sanctioned. That's when a benefit is stopped or reduced as a penalty. Callum's has been cut from £580 a month to £240. I've been given a new case manager, and he's, he's actually left a message on my journal, actually, one minute, for the second 19. We have taken into account all the information available and the decision remains the same. I, I am unable to revise the decision of 80 treating you as not having limited capability for work. This is because good reason has not been accepted with regards to your failure to attend at work capability assessment. I asked Callum why he couldn't attend. He says it was difficult to get there because he'd just moved house. But there's another reason too. Even going over to Tesco's, don't like it, there's too many people in there. I, I literally have to sit here, wait, until I see about one or two people in there, if that, before I can leave my door and go in. And if I get to... If, I, if by the time I get to that door, any more people have gone, no, turn around, coming back home. I, can't, I physically can't do it. And so, so need... that's going to Tesco across the road, but when, yeah. you, so when you get an appointment from the job centre, say, what...? Oh, can't. Unless, unless I've got someone with me, I physically cannot go. In euphemism terms, it sends me west. Right. I start to, I'll start to panic. And if I start to panic and have a panic attack, then what the hell am I going to do if I'm on my own? Figures from the Children's Society showed care leavers were five times more likely to be sanctioned than other benefits claimants. Callum's payments have been cut by the highest level of 50%. Last year, a report by MPs recommended care leavers under 25 only ever lose a maximum of 20%. But the Department for Work and Pensions rejected the idea, saying sanctions help motivate care leavers to prepare for and move into work. They will consider what changes could be made to lower the rate, but won't report back until the end of the year. Even entering the universal credit system can be a minefield. Okay. Hi, Liberty, are you OK? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see you in around 10 minutes, all right? Yes, ma'am. All right, lovely. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye. We've come to meet Liberty, who's just turned 18. Care leavers can prepare their universal credit application in advance, so it's ready to submit on their 18th birthday. Then they have the standard five-week wait for their first payment. Liberty's asked us not to show his face, so his support worker Paige explains the shock when the money just didn't appear. There was no warning, now his food's running out. I've had to ring up Universal Credit and find out why, and it was due to a misunderstanding about an appointment. So Liberty had been to Soma there but missed one, and this one wasn't even on his journal. He is in a full-time apprenticeship, but they've not been leaning at all towards that for his appointments for his payments, they've not even considered it. They don't, it doesn't get asked about it. So Liberty has had to restart his claim from scratch. He's already waited five weeks for money. Now he'll have to wait another five. They've said basically there's nothing they can do. 
the only thing Liberty can actually access is um, a food bank. And the food bank, you can only use that three times, three times of that month. Liberty, where will you get money from for the rest of this month, then? Don't know, really, yeah. I feel like that's you know, always a challenge I've got ahead to try and go past it, but I am trying my best to try and do it. You seem like a really positive person. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be positive in these situations, I think. Yeah. yeah. Best you can do. To see someone struggle every day just to eat, they're living to try and survive, and they've already come through care. They've not had the best of times, and now the system's just not helping them at all. They're setting them up to fail. We've got quite a few stores, there's different tables. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll get you some rugs. There's some Liberty did get an advance yeah. payment to tide him over the first five weeks, but he can't claim another one. And when his universal credit payments do start, he'll have to start repaying the loan at £30 a month. As with so many care leavers, he's starting his adult life off in debt. Down the road, 18-year-old Jade is also repaying her universal credit loan. She budgets her money down to the penny, but she hasn't just got herself to take care of. Hello. Oh, my God, look how tiny he is. <laughs> oh, can I have a cuddle? Yeah, is that OK? Hello, Nicole Harrison. He's now oh. six. Oh, six my now. God. Oh, Jade spent God. her childhood moving around the care system. She can remember more than 20 placements. He's gorgeous, isn't he? She and her boyfriend Anthony are determined to give Harrison a stable family life out of care. Cuts of me being in the system, if I don't deal with them, they're going to bleed onto him. Do you know what I mean? And that's like with my dad, that's like a part of the reason I ended up in the system. Because your dad was in because care. Because my dad was in care and then social services were involved. There was one night when they come and they took me and my brother, but I was only about two. And my dad had put me to sleep and I woke up and my dad wasn't there. Do you know what I mean? And I said it to him last night, the reason I can't sleep at night is in case I go to sleep and he's not there. So I was saying to him about it. So life after care of a new baby ain't the easiest. <laughs> but we got through it, didn't we, Aunt, last night? We brought the pram, which we got for a ten on, and cleaned it up. Jade has mild bipolar and has lived with mental health problems throughout her teens. Research from Bernardo's suggests more than four in ten care leavers have mental health needs. I asked Jade how she's coping with a newborn baby, a hard time for any mum. He's not making it difficult. If he was making it difficult, I probably would struggle a bit more. But he's so far, obviously it's only been a week, <laughs> so far he's not too difficult, so it's... It's all right, it's man manageable, it is. We all have our moments, bloody hell in this house, it's like, <laughs> everyone's crying. But we all just help each other through it. You've struggled with your mental health a bit, haven't you? Yeah, I have my bipolar, so. Yeah. So I've not been on meds now for, what, nine, 11 months. I've not been on my medication, I've been doing all right. Jade's been managing well since the start of her pregnancy. She was discharged by the children's mental health team and hasn't moved into adult mental health services since turning 18. Like at the time, because my mental health was stable, the adult mental health team wouldn't have seen me. So they discharged me. But because I was pregnant with him at the time, I had a mental health midwife to fall back on anyway. But the thing about me is because of everything that I've been through, when I've got to be OK, I am OK. Do you know what I mean? So I know I've got to be OK for him, so I will be OK. It's clear Jade and her support network know how important it is to keep her mental health on track. There's so much at stake. If she doesn't have this extra support right now when she needs it, because of her own, obviously, um, issues that she's spoken about, mm. then it's quite possible that the baby can just be taken back into care and it can all start again. But if the support's here right now, that's, that's not going to happen. And that's, that's the most important, important thing for a baby. Still to come. My mum, yeah, she raised us properly in that.
I meet Jamal and see how the trauma of being taken into care can leave a devastating mark. I set out to see the impact universal credit is having on care leavers. And while it is clearly presenting a huge challenge for vulnerable young people with complex needs, it's part of a bigger picture. Because more children are being taken into care and more 16 and 17 year olds are presenting as homeless, the number of care leavers is going up too. Last year, there were 11,080. That's compared with 8,460 10 years earlier, a rise of 31% in a decade. Local authorities have an obligation to support them by providing a personal advisor, helping them make a plan for the future and finding them somewhere suitable to live. So Kelly has taken on 18-year-old Calum's tenancy agreement on his behalf until he's ready to take it on himself. I'm dropping by as he gets a cooking lesson from his support worker. I was uh, 15 when I went into care and I was living in a care home. And when I turned 18, I've moved into my own flat. How does it feel to be just turned 18, to have your own place, to kind of...? It is a bit nervous cos I... Right, I'm a bit nervous cos I'm living on my own, from living with people. But you've got some support around you, haven't you? Yeah, I have support now. I've had uh, someone come in t uh, three times a week, staying over and going in the morning. So uh, is that just to kind of make you feel uh, yeah, more like comfortable that. and more safe, I guess? Uh, yeah, cos it's my first time. It must be a bit daunting living on your own. Yeah, true. Caelan's resilience is impressive, and he's gaining independence with the right help. But the fact is, when it comes to providing support, local authorities are increasingly stretched for funding. 150 councils in England responded to our Freedom of Information requests. Almost eight out of ten had overspent on their budgets for care leavers in the last financial year, by a total of over £80 million. Ofsted inspects local authorities on their provisions for care leavers. We found 7% have been judged inadequate and 47% are currently rated requires improvement. Kelly wants to introduce me to Jamal. His story is just heartbreaking. He doesn't understand why he'd been taken away from his mum. So he just became a naughty boy because he didn't think anybody cared or anybody loved him. She tells me Jamal is coping well living on his own, but after a chaotic childhood leading to drugs, violence and prison, she's worried about him setting out on his own too soon. When we arrive, Jamal's support workers dealing with a familiar issue, universal credit. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name's... Hello, my name's Kelly Robinson. I'm the director of uh, Independent Together, the support group that actually looks after and helps Jamal. Um, is there, Jamal's had no money for weeks, and it's no fault of his own. I mean, he's in college, he's working, you know, doing a little part-time role, uh, volunteer, volunteering. So he's not actually been able to make these appointments, but when we've phoned up, you know, there's been no flexibility in it at all. So is there nothing that we can do to get another appointment before next week? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're a lover. Friday, tomorrow. Friday. Um, right, should we go in? Should we go, yeah. go and have a brew? <laughs> I haven't even got no brew making stuff. Right. Kelly does manage to rearrange the appointment. Oh, and Jamal is keen for an opportunity to speak about his past. Before I left Cairo, I was in jail, innit? Yeah, and I was in jail for a while, innit? I got arrested when I was, like, 16. So I was in jail until I was, like, 18 and a half, innit? So I left jail and I left care. So I've always been used to being in the system and being in jail at the end of it as well, then that was, like, even more systematic, you know what I mean? But at the same time, yeah, I benefited a lot from being in jail. So it wasn't all bad. How did you benefit? It was stable. That was the longest placement I've ever been in since I was five, <laughs> was jail. They call it a placement. Well, it might as well have been, innit? 
they call it jail. It's not, it's not a punishment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a new way of life. Adapt. Boom. Move on. There you go. Another thing. Do you know what I mean? And it was good though because they're giving me, you know, wake up at this time, go sleep at that time, eating meals. Do you know what I mean? Before I went to jail, I was just living by my own rules because I was just sick of living by the care rules, you know what I mean? I was just running away from every home I went to. Why, how old Jamal was five when he was taken into care. Social services got involved. And I just, like, knocked on the door. My mum was upstairs in the shower. The social workers come in the house. And they just took me and my sisters and that. And they were all crying and that. Like, bawling, screaming. And I was just bare quiet. I was just like, what's going on? And then... Well, obviously, my mum was in the shower, innit? And then I just heard her screaming, and then they just drove us away, innit? That was it. Like, I'm the man, like, do you know what I mean? I'm the only boy, so... But being younger, not being able to protect my family, like, that's left me, like, obviously, like, yeah, I'm like... Do you know what I mean? That's why I was probably so, like, violent and that. You just bury it, don't you? Do you know what I mean? And move on. Cos that's what people expect you to do, cos it's in your childhood and that, do you know what I mean? What, do you feel like people are expecting you, now you're an adult, to kind of put your child... Yeah, you, you can't... I can't... I, yo, when I was a kid, yeah, I had bare anger issues and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't articulate what had happened to me and how I felt. Do you know what I mean? So I was angry all the time. Do you know what I mean? People in the playground, like, the kids, just scared of me. The teachers, yeah, they not... You know what I mean? Just some next angry kid. I just got kicked out. You know what I mean? Obviously, rah, you know, get arrested all the time and all that. You can't do that as an adult, you know what I mean? You have to bury it. But talking about his childhood is bringing back painful memories Jamal can't suppress. Got a minute? Me. They just tried to treat me, yeah? Like, I'm so f***ing Trump mum's life, yeah? I went raised by an old tr like a Trump mum. My mum, yeah, she raised us properly and that. <laughs> Such a good lad is a hard man, you know, and he's got... He's got all the opportunities in the world to be whatever he wants to be and be successful. And what he's been through in life is just so, so not fair. We're there now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, slowly, yeah. yeah. we're in college. We've got a job. We're going into our own flat, which we're going to view in a bit. The flat Jamal lives in now was only ever meant to be temporary. The council's hoping he can take on his own tenancy soon, but he's clearly anxious about the prospect. The government are paying for me to live here. They've got a problem with that. They say they want me to move on to my own accommodation. Do you know what I mean? And I pay the rent and I take up the tenancy. And if it falls off, it's on me and that. But the experience I've had with the job centre. So you don't feel ready for that? Yo, I do not feel confident, yeah. No landlord that I meet, yeah, is going to be like Kelly. They're just going to say, yo, you ain't paying, you're gone. They don't care if I've been in Carolina. They're probably even going to know. I probably even going to know the landlord. It's such an eye-opener, talking to Jamal, and it makes you realise the trauma that someone can go through being in care and the impact that that can have on their adult life. And I just wonder how we can expect young people who've been through such trauma in care to go on and lead independent adult lives without support, really, really good support. A new survey of care leavers found they are over seven times more likely to have low life satisfaction than their peers who hadn't been in care. 20% said they didn't feel that things they did in life were worthwhile, in contrast to just 4% of their peers. And that's why Kelly vows to never give up on the young people she supports. Sometimes it can, the verbal aggression can be aimed at you, yeah, and, you know, when it's... When it's a constant thing, you can just think, oh, you've got to take a step back and remember, obviously, what they've been through, why they're here. The reason that they're, they're being this way is not because of you, because, because it might be a bad day for them. So you really do have to take a step back and a, a breathe of fresh air and realise that, you know, they're just a person that's had a really, really bad start in life and you're there to help them succeed. Kelly's taking Jamal to view a potential new flat where he would take on the tenancy himself, which is what the council wants. They're trying to keep open minds, 
but it's hard. Right, let's have a look. We've got some fantastic 18-year-olds that are, are ready, you know, to move on. You can't just expect everybody to be at the same level if they've not had the same brilliant foster parents that they've had until they were 16 years old. You know, if they've been through a lot and a lot of placements, they are not going to be at the same at the same level. So what are you Mom? thinking then? Ray? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> Decorations, nothing. It can be done in a couple of days. It's just where the air, where, where the area is any good, and whether it's what you want. To be honest, it doesn't look as good as one. It's a few miles away from his current flat, and it just doesn't feel right for Jamal. So Kelly will keep on looking to give him the best chance of staying on the right path. We'll get the keys back. All right. OK. In the meantime, Jamal will go to his job centre meeting later in the week and hopes to get his benefit sanction overturned. He's got a lot going on and hassle with universal credit adds another layer of stress. During my time in Manchester, I've heard that echoed again and again. Care leavers telling me universal credit is too inflexible. It puts everyone in the same box and it compounds their already complex problems. I've met five very different young people with their own unstable pasts and their own challenges to face in the future, trying their best to make their way in the world as independent adults. Okay.